hello everyone uh, today we will continue the previous topic and in the previous topic we discussed about the comparison of mendeleev's periodic table and the modern periodic table if you haven't seen that video you can see that video uh, uh, before this okay so now today we will be discussing that what are the achievements of the modern periodic table and what are its limitations uh, because we all know that uh, uh, this is the table that we use till date and at present also we make use of this table so it means that its achievements are uh, very strong as compared to the limitations so this is the modern periodic table and we all know that the number of vertical columns in the modern periodic table they are total 18 we all can see that the total number of the vertical columns they start from 1 until 18 so these are the groups and the number of horizontal rows they are total 7 and these two horizontal rows at the end they are not the 8th or the 9th period they are the sixth and seventh only because uh, after lanthanum it starts over here and after actinium it goes over here right now let us all start with the very first achievement or the uh, plus point of the modern periodic table the very first achievement of this table is that now we are able to explain maximum properties of the elements okay so this is the first achievement now why uh, with this table we are able to explain the maximum properties and why not with the Mendeleev's periodic table so we all need to know that this table is based on atomic number okay and uh, uh, atomic number is the fundamental property of an element so if we know the atomic number of any element we can predict its properties also so this is the very first achievement because uh, before this modern periodic table whatever classification was done it was done on the basis of atomic mass and atomic mass is not the fundamental property of an element it means that we cannot explain all the properties of the element through its atomic mass but now since this table is based on atomic number and atomic number is the fundamental property of the element so now we can explain the properties of the elements through its atomic number right so this is the first achievement that now we can predict the properties of the elements now comes that what is the second advantage or second achievement of modern periodic table now if you see that this is the left corner of the modern periodic table so we need to understand that on the left side of the modern periodic table and in the center of the modern periodic table we have all metals right so whatever green colored slots you see in the modern periodic table they are of metals so left and center of the uh, modern periodic table is having metals and approximately 80 percent of the modern periodic table is having elements which are metals right now when we go towards the right corner of the modern periodic table we move towards the non-metals right but can we see that the metals and the non-metals okay metals on the left and the center and non-metals on the right corner of the modern periodic table they are separated by a zigzag line so this zigzag line is of another category of elements and that is called as the metalloids right so this is also an achievement that metals are on the left and center of the periodic table non-metals are on the right of the periodic table and metals and non-metals they are separated by a zigzag line and that zigzag line is of metalloids now what are metalloids these are those elements which have properties similar to both metals as well as non-metals okay so such elements they are called as metalloids so this is the second achievement that the metals and non-metals they are separated from each other by a zigzag line of elements and these elements are called as metalloids right now let us have a look on to the third achievement that do you remember the limitations of the modern uh, Mendeleev periodic table 
so in that case there was a limitation that mendeleev could not explain the position of the isotope but now in the modern periodic table it is not a limitation it is uh, an achievement now how come like when uh, you might have seen it in the tutorial of achievement and limitation of mendeleev's periodic table Uh, so you can check it from there also suppose i consider one example like i have given in that tutorial also c612 c613 and c614 these are the three isotopes of carbon right now mendeleev he focused on the atomic mass right he said that my periodic table is based on increasing order of atomic mass so he was supposed to give how many positions to these isotopes three but he didn't keep them in three slots he just put all the three isotopes of carbon in a single slot and then he said that my importance is on property not on atomic mass so this was the limitation but now we all know that all the isotopes they can be placed in a single slot why because the atomic number is same right so all the isotopes now we know that they will be placed together in a single slot because isotopes are the atoms of the same element having same atomic number but different atomic mass and the modern periodic table we all know that it is based on atomic number so this is also an achievement now so this is our achievement number 3 that isotopes position is now clear to everybody that why isotopes are kept in a single slot because isotopes are the atoms of the same elements which have the same atomic atomic number and this table is also based on atomic number right so three achievements are clear to everybody moving on to the fourth and the last achievement that was a limitation for mendeleev that suppose like i am talking here about mendeleev's periodic table okay so mendeleev's periodic table was based on atomic mass now suppose there were two elements x and y the atomic mass of x is 15.1 and the atomic mass of y is 15.7 so in such a case we cannot tell that how many elements are present between x and y because atomic masses they are in fractions so there can be a single element whose mass is 15.3 there can be another element of 15.4 mass there can be another of 15.5 and another of 15.6 right so we don't know whether a single element is present in between or two or three or four in this case but now that problem is also solved so now the modern periodic table is based on atomic number and atomic numbers are always whole numbers remember that atomic numbers are never in fractions so suppose that i give you two elements p and q okay so suppose the atomic number of p is 13 and of q is 15 so we know that there is only one element missing in between and its atomic number is going to be 14 so now this work is also uh, easy it is simplified for us okay suppose there are two elements again i am writing on this side a and b okay now let us say that the atomic number of a is 2 and of b is 3 so we know that there is no element present in between because they are whole numbers right so these are the achievements of the modern periodic table let us recall what are the achievements first achievement is that now the properties of the elements can be predicted very easily because this is based on atomic number and atomic number is the fundamental property of the element second the metals which are on the left and center they are separated from the non metals which are on the right by a zigzag line of metalloids metalloids are those elements which behave like both metals and non metals third achievement is that the position of the isotopes is now clear isotopes will be placed in a single slot because all the atoms of the element they have the same atomic number right and fourth is that now we can predict the number of elements between any two elements okay because atomic numbers are in whole numbers they are never in fraction so now we can tell that how many elements they are present between two uh elements if we know their atomic number okay but 
achievements like we have discussed properties prediction of the properties of the element then metals are separated from non metals by a zigzag line position of isotope and even we can predict the number of element between any two elements but there are certain limitations also and there are two major limitations which are still present in the modern periodic table the very first limitation is the same like that of mendeleev that is the position of hydrogen okay now if you see that hydrogen is not connected to lithium there is a gap between hydrogen and lithium now why hydrogen position is still a limitation because do you remember that word i discussed in the limitation of uh, mendeleev's periodic table hydrogen is a rug element rug means something which is controversial something which is uh, not stable okay and uh, hydrogen is actually a non on metal but it has been placed above metals okay and hydrogen resembles some of its properties to group 1 okay and in some of its properties it it resembles group 17 so this is still a problem that where should hydrogen be kept but now since like hydrogen why aren't we placing it above 17 17 group is of non metal hydrogen is also a non metal so likewise one uh, opinion says that hydrogen should be kept above non metals okay but then there are many properties of hydrogen which resembles the alkali metals also right then why is hydrogen still placed above alkali metals because as you can see that period 1 has only two elements hydrogen and helium it gives a symmetrical look to the periodic table and second very important reason is that our modern periodic table is based on atomic number and the atomic number of hydrogen is 1 so it will come at the first place right so this is the reason that is given that hydrogen is placed at above the alkali metals because the modern periodic table is based on atomic number and uh, it starts with 1 so it should come at the first position and when we place it above alkali metals that is over here it gives a symmetrical look to the periodic table also moreover hydrogen resembles in many properties to the alkali metals also okay but still it is a limitation that where should we place hydrogen and second very important limitation is that why are the two row, rows of lanthanoids and actinoids they are kept separate below the periodic table why are they not a part of the main table okay so as we uh, know that lanthanum is 57 so 58 comes here till 71 is filled here and 72 goes in the main table right and uh, actinium is 89 then 90 comes down till 103 it is filled in the row and 104 goes in the main table now why are these two rows separated so this belongs the first row that is lanthanoids they belong to sixth period actinoids they belong to the seventh period right but then why are they separated the first reason is that these lanthanoids and actinoids their properties are different okay from the elements which are a part of the table right first reason is that that why are they separated because their properties are different from the rest of the elements and the second reason is that i just want you to imagine that we keep 58th element over here and then we fill up 71 and 72 will come somewhere here so what will happen it will cause the expansion of the periodic table our periodic table will expand to the right hand side and when it will expand to the right hand side total these are 14 elements okay so it means that there will be an expansion of 14 elements so what will happen that shift will happen over here also and the properties of these elements are similar but if we place these two rows over here these properties will not match and our periodic table will not be symmetrical anymore right so we need to separate them but still this is a limitation but i hope that uh, these are not so strong limitations the achievements of modern periodic table they are very strong as compared to the 
limitations. So I hope that you are clear with the four achievements of modern periodic table and the two limitations of modern periodic table. Thank you everybody.